time for a talk time. Today's topic is a long overdue request from one of you guys, which is illusion. We will talk about what illusion is, the different methods of illusions, when we would perform illusions, and why we would do it. I will also give you a procedures overview. Without further ado, let's get into it. What is illusion? Illusion is the process of removing bound antibodies usually IgG, from the red blood cell surface. We want to unbound the antibody-antigen bond. We want to disturb that bond. The procedure is called elution. The act of removing the bond antibody is called eluding. The fluid that the removed antibody is in called the eluid. Once you have the eluid, you can use it for antibody identifications, just like you would with the patient plasma and I have video about antibody identification if you need to review it. There are several elution techniques. I listed them all here. However, acid elution techniques are the most commonly used for recovering IgG antibodies. And here is a table highlighting the technique and their importance characteristics. Why do we need to learn about illusions? It's because one of you guys requested, and on top of that, it's a useful technique that blood banker used during antibody identification process. We use illusions to evaluate in vivo positive direct anti-goblin tests in the following situations. 1. Investigations of positive DAT results. 2. Investigations of drug-induced hemolytic anemia. 3. Investigations of hemolytic transfusion reactions. Four, investigations of hemolytic disease of fetus and newborn. Five, investigations of autoimmune hemolytic anemia like warm auto hemolytic anemia, coagglutin disease, lupus in the acute phase. There are other uses as well, but these are the common ones. Even with these many applications, performing an illusion routinely is not recommended. DAT positive could be caused by the following conditions. 1. Medication induced. 2. Elevated serum goblin level. 3. Sepsis. 4. HIV status. 5. Various oncology conditions can also cause the DAT to be positive. The following are factors that can influence your illusion's outcome. 1. Inadequate washings of sensitized red blood cells before illusion's process. So you can mess up your illusion if the washing is inadequate. So washing red blood cell prior to the start of illusion process is essential step because the excess of unbound residues antibody could contaminate your final products. This is why you should perform QC using the supernet from the last wash and it should be negative or non-reactive before continuing on to the next step. If your QC is positive or reactive, you will repeat the washing steps and repeat the QC until your QC is non-reactive before moving on to the next step. 2. Binding of protein to glass surface. Unbound proteins could also bind to the tube surface which is why one of the first steps in illusion is to transfer the desi a desired amount to a new clean tube. This step serves two things. One, it allows you to only perform illusions in a smaller volume, like you don't need the entire volume to perform this one. And two, it decreases chance of contamination from the non-specific binds to the side of the tube. Three. This association of antibody before illusion process is finished. Some antibody could disassociate itself before the complete process of the illusion, which could result in false negative, such as the IgM antibody from anti-A and anti-M, or low affinity of the IgG. We can minimize this loss by washing the cells with cold saline or wash solutions provided by the manufacturer. 4. Incorrect technique. Do you have to say more? 
I don't think so, but I will. Illusions require a lot of washings and discarding the souvenirs, but on the last step, once you added the solutions that will extract the antibody, you will want to keep that souvenir. I cannot tell you how many times that I trained new people and they throw away their illuit. All I can say was, congratulations, you can now repeat the process. So be careful, don't throw away your illuit. Procedures. As I mentioned earlier, there are several illusions techniques, and I won't be able to cover them all in detail. I will give you an overview for one of the most commonly used techniques, which is the coal acid illusions. Why do I choose this one? Well, it's the most commonly used, and it is the technique that I use in my hospital. In this technique, the red blood cell coated with antibody is first thoroughly washed to remove all unbound proteins, using special wash solutions to maintain the bound antibodies. Perform the QC using supernet from the last wash. It is a very important step. The wash cells are then suspended in glycine solutions at low pH to disassociate the bound antibodies. After the centrifuge, the supernet containing dissociated antibody is separate from the red blood cells and neutralized by adding buffer solutions. Now you have the illuit and it is ready to be tested for antibody identifications. Normally, the illuit will be tested against a panel of reagent red blood cells. Please keep in mind that if the patient is being evaluated for ABO blood groups antibodies, the illuit will need to be tested with A1 and B reagent cells as well. So add those to your panel. Interpretations When you use the illuit testing against the reagent red blood cells, if you see agglutinations, antibody detected. No agglutinations, no antibody detected. That's all I have for today. Did I miss anything? If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer them. If I don't know, I will try my best to find out for you. Also, keep in mind that the information I put together here is the general practice at the moment. As time change, certain practice may change and different institutions may have different policies. So please keep an eye out for that. If you like my video and think it's helpful in any way, please share it with your friends and I shall see you all next time. As always, remember, your blood tell you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye.